been three years now, four years? How many years has it been, Caitlin? Three years since I graduated, yep. Okay, so three years. And I remember mm -hmm. Professor Nakin at the time telling me that, that Caitlin at the time was the best chief operating officer we ever had on the team because she would always bring to him things, I hope I'm not paraphrasing you incorrectly, Professor Nakin, but she would always bring to him things that had to get done before he even had a chance to think about what had to get done. She knew <laughs> that's the way she is. I mean, she, she's always a step ahead of everybody. I'm sure she's a step ahead of everybody at work as well. Uh, she is just very smart, very, very pleasant to work with, and one of, they say professors are not supposed to have favorites, but I will tell you on that team, Caitlin was one of my favorites for sure, without a doubt. Uh, so I'm glad yeah. she was able to come here today. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I can also introduce myself a little bit. I am Caitlin. I graduated in 2017. As Dr. C said, I was on the brand marketing team my senior year. I was the COO. It was a lot of fun. We worked on Taipei frozen foods, which was challenging to say the least but um, such a wonderful experience and I'm really glad that I can come here today and tell you more about what I currently do. I work for a company called G3. Um, they own a bunch of brands. So I work on brands like DKNY, Donna Karen, GH Fast, which is like the penny loafer Weijin shoe, um, Andrew Mark, which makes like really beautiful jackets, but they don't really get the recognition they deserve just yet. Um, and yeah, and on top of that, I also have a freelance job doing social marketing for Piccolina Kids, which is a children's clothing brand. Um, and I started working for them on top of my regular job about five months ago now. Yeah. So I guess it's over to you, Brenna. Oh, I thought you were giving the, doing the questions, of course. Well, I kind of I I did it. I, I mean, I, I kind of did. I mean, what you're going to hear from, from Kate, Caitlin is what life was like when she was at Pace, what yeah. led to her success, and, and she's been very successful, and what's continuing to lead to her success. So, but Brenna, you have all the good questions, so go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, Caitlin, where are you from, and what made you decide to attend Pace University, and why did you decide to become a marketing major? So I am from Huntington, Long Island. I used to come to the city a lot as a child and I always knew I wanted to go to the school, school in the city. Um, my top two choices at the time were NYU Pace and FIT. Um, NYU was too expensive, so that got kiboshed. But between FIT and Pace, I was really focused more on seeing what the programs could offer. And after visiting Pace, I really found that that could be my school. I didn't feel like I was going to be like a small fish in a big pond or a big fish in a small pond. And I knew I could like find my way. And through my experience at Pace, I would definitely, oh, I always knew I was going to be a marketing major. I should probably start with that. Um, I've always liked advertisements. I always thought they were very interesting. And the more I worked at Pace and through my internships, I found that while I did like the creative side of things, I was more best fitted for um like the back end of things with like the ad placements and copy and things like that cool so were there any experiences that you had at pace that shaped the vision for your career like any courses that you took or any internships like you had mentioned a little bit about internships that shaped your experience if you want to go a little bit more into that yeah, definitely. Um, the two main classes I would say was Business 150, which like started my expectations for what Pace was going to be like in terms of business school and the brand marketing team. Um, between, oh, also, I'm going to also say communications because that showed me that I didn't want to do that. Um, and I think it's important to try things while you can at Pace to see what you do like and what you don't like. So with Business 150, I was like, oh, wow, like, this is for me. I like what I'm learning about. I can see myself going up a bunch of different avenues. It was just like a nice little, like, um, taste of everything that you can learn at Pace. And then with the brand marketing team, I really found myself, and I feel like your senior year, just like in high school, you, like, grow into your next level of person, I guess, is the way I would describe it. So 
with the responsibilities and also like applying to jobs and graduation, you're put under such pressure. I'm going to use in quotations, but I help it. I think it helps define like what you're comfortable with, what you can do and how you can grow as a person. Um, so yeah, I would say that those are my three main classes that really help shape my marketing uh, life now. Cool. Do you want to talk a little bit more about your leadership position specifically in brand marketing teams? Since I know you held a pretty big position. Yeah, in definitely. Campaign. Yeah, no problem. Um, so when we started the class, they, you know, explained all the leadership positions. And of course, there's the president and the COO. And I was like, I'm going to be the president. Like, this is for me. I'm in charge of everyone. I get to do the book. But the more they kept explaining how intense it was and detail oriented, while I am detail oriented, I knew everyone in the class to such an extent that I felt like it was kind of a better and more natural fit for me because I wasn't afraid to be like, hey, you're late on this. Like this needs to happen today. But in a way that it was like approachable and nice and where people felt calm enough to come to me and say, hey, so-and-so isn't maybe pulling their weight and, and us be able to work through that position. It was definitely sometimes challenging to not be the bad guy, but that's a part of the job sometimes, even in my current role. Sometimes you have to say, hey, you need to pull your weight. We have this project due next week. Um, so it's definitely a, a great like sample of the real world for sure. Cool. Um, so did you have any other like jobs or like any major internships during your time at Pace that like shaped the direction you wanted to go into for your like future career? I think that any leadership position really helps um, when you're applying to jobs or internships that you are responsible and that's something and can take initiative, which is something that as you guys probably all know at this point, um, companies are looking for. So on top of being the COO, I also was a resident assistant or advisor now, I'm not sure what they're calling it, for three years. That was awesome. Um, I was in charge of the women's empowerment floor for two of those, which was just like a great um, addition to some of my interests. I interned in, a ver um, in multiple different fields because again, I think that internships are a chance for you to like, get a taste of all the different things you're interested in doing. So I interned at Diva Curl, which is a hair care company. And I worked in their like PR communications department. Um, I did, sorry, I'm just thinking of all of them off the top of my head right now. It's so long ago at this point. I, my last no internship problem. was Melanski and Partners, which was an ad agency that focused in linguistics. That was the coolest internship I had. Um, but I'm also like a nerd and was very interested in how language affects ads. So what I would do there is I would look at surveys. They would go out to groups of people and have them listen to the same ad over and over and then be like, oh, well, this one resonated best. And it's just because they would change a few words and just how the words resonated was very important at the time. Um, so that was a really cool one. I also worked at a nonprofit that was a drug rehabilitation place called Odyssey House. And that was amazing. I helped um, revamp their website and do a bunch of interviews with actual clients there. Uh, and that was just very rewarding and did show me that I did like nonprofits, but I didn't necessarily feel the impact that I wanted in more of a business profit side. Um, and so that definitely helped me when I started applying to jobs to make sure I was still like focused on my interests, but um, my net was still wide enough where I was going to be happy with whatever I ended up getting. And I ended up working at G3 and it's been great. Nice. So actually moving away from your PACE career into your current career, how did you get your first job at G3? Okay, so graduating college, do not be upset, guys, if you do not get a job right away. I really wanted one. I was very set on it, but it just wasn't happening. I don't know if it was the job market. The things that I was being offered, I felt like the pay was very low, and I understand I was just starting off, but... I knew my worth coming from Pace and the, um, the skill sets that I had from all my previous experiences. So I took a few months off, actually, did the classics. Went to you Europe went trip. backpacking. You went backpacking in Europe or something like that, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, I did that for um, a month and a half. That was wonderful. I highly suggest it if the world ever goes back to normal. Um, and then I came back and sat on my mom's couch and applied to jobs 
every single day, all day and night. And then randomly one day, someone messaged me on LinkedIn. It was a recruiter. And she said, hey, I liked your profile. Would you be interested in this company? And I was like, fashion? My mom works in fashion. So I was like, no way, I'm not doing that. Um, but I'll go for the interview. It's good interview practice. And I met with the team and there was these two incredibly smart young women, um, Allison and Kristen, and they blew me away. They were so smart. They knew what they were talking about. They, it was for a social media analyst position. So kind of like looking at um, how we were doing and just like crunching the numbers, which I was interested in, but thinking about it from, from a fashion world kind of threw me off, but meeting them and, and getting to see the team and, and how smart they were and how much I could learn from them, I took the position. Um, and it's been great, yeah. Cool. What do you do exactly in, or what did you do in that job specifically? Right. So I started at G33 years ago, and I primarily worked on the brand DKNY. Um, my job started off very light, I would say, compared to what I had been doing in college, which was kind of a nice break in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing a lot of analysis, so like how we were growing our engagement rate using this platform called Sprinkler and Google Analytics slightly to um, just see our growth and how things were performing. I, we do a lot of influencer campaigns, so just being like, okay, who, even though this person cost $10,000 to work with, like how much did we get back in followers, revenue, those kind of things. So it was very exciting, but it was very numbers oriented. And the more I worked there and was seeing the creative that was coming about, I started to be able to use my own voice to input my just like some decisions. And now I work across um, a few brands. I got promoted to a digital coordinator, which now I help write copy for some of the brands. I fully run influencer campaigns of my, by myself. Um, I started a blog for the Weijin's brand with um, the creative director where we interview different uh, people from across the country that, are cool and different and unique in a lot of ways, like chefs and tattoo artists, but that they all have the commonality of that they wear Weijin. Um, and so I've been doing that as well as everything else. It's been, you can make your job what you want it once you prove yourself. And I think that that is what has happened at G3. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been wonderful. I think that it was just like a little bit of a learning curve. And then once I proved myself I I really like what I do now. That sounds great. Did you have to apply to this new job that you're in or like was it just a promotion where you they asked you like how did you end up getting this new position? As a digital coordinator? Right? Yeah. yeah. So I worked there for about a year and a few months and my boss Kristen left the company. So I was taking on more work and it's very important I will say to advocate for yourself when it's your first job it's super nerve-wracking I did not know how to do it I was very stressed but I knew I wasn't being paid enough for the work I was doing I was worth more so I went to my new boss and I was like hello this needs to happen and um, eventually after some time it all it all worked out I'm in the process of doing that again it is a little bit slower than some people might assume it's not like in the movies where it's like you're promoted, but that's fine. It's, it's, it's also a pandemic, so. <laughs> How has it been, like, working through a, this pandemic? Like, have you seen, like, a difference in the working? How is it to work from home? Like, what, how is that? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I'm going to answer this very politically, that it's been difficult in a lot of ways because I can't collaborate as well as I used to where I would just pop over to someone's desk but I feel like my time is managed a lot better because I'm focused at my, my kitchen um, doing my work. It was, some people of course got furloughed. We were a larger company. Um, actually, a lot of people are starting to come back, which is very exciting. We're also starting to go back into the office a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's slowly getting back to where it was. I will say working from home was wonderful though. Once you get into the routine, I'm sure you guys too last semester, once you start to get into the routine of like, of like being diligent and making sure you have a workspace and you're not working from your bed, it becomes a lot easier to um, really get it done properly. Yeah. Cool. So how do you think that your like pace career has helped you in your current career? Like, do you think that pace 
really set you up for success for what you're doing now? I would say the, again, like the leadership abilities by being able to prove myself throughout both pace and in my current profession that I'm capable of it and I want to do more and I'm ready for more. Um, people notice that. And it's also great just to advocate again for yourself to say, hey, I can take this on or I have time to do this. Like, what, what else can I do? I think that pace really also time management is so important. And I know that everyone says that, but it really is. I was babysitting twice a week, interning three days a week, had a full course load and was an RA. Like I was doing the most at certain points, but it helped me be like, okay, from this time to this time I can study and just like really made me better. Once you're an adult and you're not in classes, you have all this free time all of a sudden. Like you don't need to be babysitting. You don't have an internship. It's just nine to five or 10, whatever it is. So making sure that you still are growing as a person past that is something Pace taught me. Like I still made sure I was educating myself past what I needed to know. Like I still read a lot of business books. I'm still subscribed to all the e-marketer newsletters. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just like still making sure that I'm like engaged in the world and like being able to bring up articles and things to my boss to be like, look at this, like we should try this out or stuff like that has really, and that all came from taste. That's really cool. So do you have any advice for students who want to get into like the fashion industry or digital marketing? Like what advice would you have for students right now to like set them up, set them up for success in that kind of career? Yeah, definitely. Um, for fashion, that is a whirlwind all the time. Things I feel like are changing a lot in that industry because large brands are starting to become not as popular for like even Calvin Klein, if you look at them, like, they're still iconic in a lot of ways, but their actual business and their model is starting to shrink. So it might not be the best to go after like large names or like big companies, although you might have like the best opportunity there, but like find a company you're passionate about. So if your thing is like sustainability, find that small brand that you can help really grow and grow with it. Um, and also to find jobs, I think LinkedIn was really helpful because if you like a company, for example, I was interested at working at Coty. And so I was looking and I saw that, oh, these three people I have connections to. Let me message Dr. C because he actually is my connection to this person. Can he put in a good word for me? Can I like meet this person for coffee? Um, being on the brand marketing team, that also helped open a lot of doors because all the past, past alums are great resources. Um, what else? Just knowing people. I know that sounds really horrible, but like knowing people really helps. So putting yourself out there, if you're interested in like fashion, but you're a marketing student, like joining pro fashionals is not the worst thing for you. Like, I think it can be very helpful to expand your network in a lot of ways like that. Um, and if you know anyone who's had an internship anywhere, it does not hurt to be like, Hey, I know you worked there. Like, what, did you like it? Can we just talk about it? I'm interested in applying. Most of the time people want to help you. It's, it's hard to get jobs. Like people are there as resources. Cool. Thank you. I think yeah. we can open it up to if anyone else has any questions, Dr. C, if you have any questions you want to ask first. Just, just two things. One, uh, I want to underscore the something she said about uh, going on interviews. Never not go on an interview. Every time you go on an interview, uh, you'll, you'll be better at interviewing. That's number one. And even an interview that you think you don't want the job, once you go on the interview, you may realize you really like the people and you really like the job. So uh, try not to turn down interview opportunities. I, am, I do have one question, Caitlin. I have my own answer, but I want to know what your answer is. Why did you not like the communications course or courses you took that you said steered you away from that? I'm curious. Um, I had an adjunct professor, so I didn't feel like he was very, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. He was like, he, I think this was his own class he taught at Pace, and he um, maybe wasn't as enthused as some of the other professors, but I think that kind of turned me away from it. And also just the material and learning, like PR statements and those kind of things didn't really spark my interest in a lot of ways. Um, 
there were a lot of skills that were very helpful. I work very closely with the PR team now. And so from that class, I do think that it does help me like connect with them on certain things that they do work on now. But at the time, right. I didn't really, it yeah. didn't really razzle and dazzle me. There's a, um, it depends on who your professor is. It depends on what course you take. That being said, some of our best students on the brand marketing team have been Dyson communication students, but they've been Dyson communication students who have taken a lot of marketing courses. And mm -hmm. If you're going to be in the marketing world, I, the two the two areas I always find amusing, either arts and entertainment management or, or mm -hmm. uh, Dyson communications, most of those people end up working in marketing jobs. So mm -hmm. I always wonder, why don't you major in marketing in the first place? Is that where you're going, going to end up anyway? Too many math classes, I think. <laughs> What's that? Too many oh, math, math yeah. classes? I think there's more math or something. Marketing, there, you don't have to take calculus, though, which was a uh, key well, for that's me. Right. So. There are a lot of employers that look upon communications majors as these people can write well, hopefully. But do they, but they can, can they... Do they know what the marketing issues are? Do they know what the marketing concepts are? Do they, can they do market research? You know, that's the thing that, that employers tend to think about. And that's why they tend to, all things being equal, give the nod to the marketing major. Mm -hmm. you now you can be a marketing major as, as be a communications minor or a communications major be a marketing minor. But it's important to have those business marketing skills that you can talk about in, your, in the interview because you're going to end up working in marketing, whether you're a marketing major, an arts and entertainment major, or a Dyson communications major, you're gonna end up in media or marketing anyway. Right. Yeah. Definitely. I don't have any other questions. Professor Nankin, do you have any questions before we open it up to students? Yeah, who is this person who's here now? I have no idea. Hi, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm super, as are you. Good. Uh, <laughs> I was interested that you uh, indicated that Business 150, which is now renumbered to Business 101, in case some of you, okay. yeah, which is uh, exactly the same course, just a different number. Uh, <clears throat> the, um, uh, I, was, I was interested that you, you said that was an important course. And uh, of course I taught it, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and the brand marketing team. There was a third course that you said, I, it was a 221? I took like public relations. It was like a communications class. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't have, really have any uh, questions per se. So I would like to open it up to the students here what they want. Mm -hmm. We do have one question that I got in the chat. So I'll ask that first, but everyone else, if you have questions in mind, think about them. And after this question, we'll open the floor up. But for the first question, for your internships you did at Pace, how did you get them? Like, was it through LinkedIn, career services, Dr. C and Professor Nankin? Like, how did you find these yeah. internships you did? Okay, so Diva Curl, a friend of mine. It's really, it's, I'm gonna say it again, connections are so important. My friend, I have curly hair and was like, oh, my friend works for this curly hair brand. Like, do you wanna do PR there? And I was like, yeah, of course. So that was Diva Curl, Odyssey House. My cousin did their photography, um, but she was much older and was like, oh, do you want an internship here? And I actually stayed there for two and a half semesters because it was just so great. Melanski and Partners, I applied through their website. Career Services was very helpful in like looking at my resume, but as you continue in marketing classes, they um, prefer your resume a little slightly different with like the statement at the top. And so I will say that like, depending on the job, it does like that does change your resume, but Career Services was very helpful in that. Um, I did work somewhere else and it's not coming to me right now. It's not on my resume anymore either, so I can't check. But I don't think I got anything from career services. Oh, I used the website Idealist. Um, I was very interested in nonprofits, and so that was very helpful. Um, Weren't you going to be a nonprofit professional? Wasn't that one of your goal? Yeah, that was my minor. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Trying to save the world, you know? Yep. <laughs> How's that um, going? How's that going? It is, you know still in the works. I use a lot of reusable items now, so it's a 
absolutely doing my part. I Actually, I do have a question. I'd like to know more mm -hmm. about this other job that you have. Is that a- Picolina uh, Kids? Yes. Yeah, um, so my friend who I used to work with at DKNY, she uh, moved to American Eagle and she started working for this company from someone else who used to work at T3. Um, she started her own brand, it's called Picolina Kids. They're super awesome, you should check them out. They make children's t-shirts that are trailblazers. So they have like Harriet Tubman, RBG, My Jameson, a bunch of famous iconic women on these shirts, but mm -hmm. they're for children as like inspirational people to look up to. Um, and they also have like a regular like fall collection with like patterns. The idea is that it's for empowerment. So even the patterns aren't butterflies. It's like entomology, geography, um, like space. It's just to like inspire young girls for, through stream and they donate a lot of their um, profits to different uh, nonprofits. So I guess I am kind of working in nonprofits a little, but I do their social media. So I'm currently the community management plus, I'm going to say. So I do a lot more than community management, which is like responding to DMs and posts and liking things. I also work on the blog there. I do their social strategy, so what they're posting and when. Um, I'm working, I'm going to start doing some influencer stuff with them. We're getting up to that point. We were on Oprah's favorite things last Christmas, um, and the company will be a year next Sunday. Are you, so it's small, it's a startup and it's, it's doing really, really well. Are you, are you basically pro bono or, or what? No, no, oh. I get, um, I'm like, they give me a monthly amount. I'm paid monthly. I'm a contractor through them. Okay. Because it sounds like you're doing a lot of work there. Oh, never work for, well, I mean, for some internships, you have to work for free. Try to get, always get credit for those. But yeah, now my time's valuable. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. Time management, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my days are like 8 to 8.30, I would say. I get up, I do a little bit, go to the office, do my real job, real job, and then do the rest at home. It's fine. I'm awake during those hours anyway. It's not like I'm adding anything I'm not normally and she's not, on my computer. And she is now a real estate tycoon as well. Can I tell you? Yeah. She owns this massive apartment <laughs> complex in Newburgh, New York or someplace up that way. It's not I massive. <laughs> yes, I saved a lot of money um, by going to Pace and I was able to, with three of my friends who I met through Pace, um, we just bought an apartment building. Um, so now I'm a landlord and that will hopefully pay off some debt in the future. Bye, real oh. estate. There you go. <laughs> it's a good time. Wow, <laughs> making me blush. I like that. Yeah, thank you. So it all started, it all started with Business 150. At that's Dayton right. University. I said, hmm. <laughs> that's great. How about the rest of you? Anybody have any questions? That real estate, uh... Kim, We're I not don't here. think I can hear you. Come mm -hmm. closer to the uh, mic. His earbuds are messed up. If you want to type it in, Cam, I can also ask. <laughs> I said congrats on buying your building. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been good. Um, we planted a garden for the residents last week, so that's exciting. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else have questions? I think there's another don't be question. shy. <laughs> Please don't be shy. It's so so Jennifer is asking a question. She's working on her MS in Arts and Entertainment Management. And she's asking about what courses to take. Is that right? What courses to take? Um, as like elective classes? in the arts and entertainment management program and I found it funny that you guys all said that like I had a comm major and public relations in as my undergrad and I think that what I lack in is what you said you really like um, in terms of crunching numbers and like ROI so I'm more on the creative side but like the reason I didn't go into marketing was what you said I didn't want to do math mm -hmm. so right, yeah then there becomes this like issue of like well what should I take I guess before I graduate right to strengthen myself in those areas. Definitely, so my two big suggestions are if you like a professor or you connect with a professor and they teach multiple classes, 
I think that's really helpful because then you have that relationship. So even if you are struggling in the class, they kind of know you and they understand your personality and what are your strengths and weaknesses. So for example, for math for me, not my strong suit, but by having the same teacher, I think you have to take like 101 and 102. Like I don't really remember. I had the same teacher. I made sure I had the same woman. Fantastic. Because then even though I'm not great at math, she knew me. She understood like where I would struggle when I went to her extra help. Like it all worked out. Um, some classes also to take if you are struggling in math. I really enjoyed my ecom classes. I actually took an extra ecom class called I think it was economics through a photographer's lens. That one was really cool, actually. I think you would like that. You take photography. Half the, the class is split in two. It's with Shastia. Um, half the class is like you go out and you take photos. And then the other half of the class is like understanding economic principles. So like, I don't know, I did a project on like smoking. So I took photos of like people smoking cigarettes across the city. And then I wrote about how like the cost of smoking and like how that affects workers comp, something like that. It was very cool. It kind of gave me the math because it, there are equations in it, but still like the creativity that you said you liked. Um, that was really fun. Both of them. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. both worlds straight up I'd be like lost so I need something to melt them <laughs> yeah that will definitely melt them for you it's a great class I suggest it for everyone I really like ecom I sometimes wish I did that but marketing's great look at me now <laughs> I don't know anyone else there are people and I want to ask the question but there are people in and out of my house right now but I'll type it Oh, basically, the office that you're working at is in New York, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're located in New York? Okay, I just wanted to see. Yeah, it's on um, Times Square, I'm going to say. It's like 40th right. and 8th. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Are you planning on going back to the office anytime soon, or are they, is the company planning on staying work from home for a while longer? No. So, um, my company is not doing that. You actually have to go back five days a week if your salary was cut, if you want to get your full salary reinstated. Um, my salary was not cut because I am not a VP, which is very nice in some ways, I guess. Um, so I only have to come in three days a week and they want us to start coming in five days a week, but with everything starting to spike again, I'm very curious to see. I think that that's another really important thing to look at when you're applying to jobs. The money is, is a great motive, but also keep in mind like company culture, like, um, and I don't think that these are weird questions to ask during like your second round interview. Like, oh, like, especially when you talk to like, who would be your direct supervisor? Like asking like, so what's the company culture? Like, when was the last time you guys all went out together? Things like that, just to understand like how close you will be with your coworkers or like how often you'll have time for yourself. Oh, do something. That was the, sorry, I just remembered. Do something was in my other internship. I got that through applying through their website they had great company culture that's why that just clicked um they would like be able to take sabbaticals there they had tuesdays they would play africa by toto for the last like 20 minutes to make sure that everyone's getting out of the office by five um they just like did funny things like that to like create a culture where you would want to work there because it is a nonprofit. the sellers were slightly less than um, a for-profit company but they made it where you were so happy to be there Cool, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, does anyone else? Yeah, actually, I have another question. So, uh, I feel like for me, going in another year and a half, two years, year and a half, let's say, because yeah, mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, I feel like going on a job, like there's always a like, oh, you want to go in and you want to be happy with where you're working and you want to mm -hmm. feel like you're doing something to change the workforce, like the workplace that you're in. But also, like, like I know that starting salaries right now I don't know I, they're not I feel like going in money is of, of course an, an issue and like you want to like make sure that you're getting like good pay for what you're doing but mm -hmm. when you were going in looking at a uh, salary uh, any advice on that and then just like are you happy with like what you got or do you wish you got like do you wish you were like a little higher in the salary range and should we be nervous about it or should we be like, yeah, that's. Okay. That is a great question. Um, I think what was very helpful is that when I was graduating, all of my friends and I were very open with each other about what ranges we were starting to receive. 
I would say that most people I knew that started working at like an agency were making like 35,000, which you have enough roommates, you get a small enough place, like it, it can work. But for me, I didn't want to do that necessarily. And I didn't want to really work at an agency. So just by going to the board, like the business side rather than, or the client side rather than the agency side, um, there was already an increase, but I also work in fashion. So if I worked in like tech or something, your salary would be higher. So I think Glassdoor does a really great job of giving you ranges of things. Um, my starting salary was much higher than um, 35000 And with my last uh, promotion, it also increased a, a fair amount, like like 12%, I would say. So you just have to make sure that you're fighting for the right things. When I did, I will say that when I started at G3, they tossed out a number and I was like, hi, I was like, already my email reply and was like, hi, like, can we do more? Here's what I was thinking. And they were like, no, sorry, we can't. But I asked, I put it out there. And from my friends who work in HR, they typically tell you that there is a range and they normally give you like towards the low end. So if you ask for the high end, they'll try to meet you in the middle. HR actually ended up um, messing up my paperwork. So I actually made the number I asked for. <laughs> so that was great, even though they told me no. So yeah, I, that was lucky though. Can't um, always rely on ineptitude, however. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was very lucky. Um, but don't, you're, they're gonna lowball you because they can. Um, you're right out of college, you have experience, but maybe not like a workplace experience, but don't forget to be like, listen, I just, I interned for three, four semesters in a row. That's two years experience right there. Um, you're doing the same work of your boss, if not the work your boss doesn't want to do when you're interning. So you're an employee and um, you need to leverage that experience. And also your experience in your classrooms, your pace, I will say, this is going to sound horrible, but um, we normally get our interns from a different school, not pace, because they do like full year internships almost or like six months internships I think it's northeastern it might be northwestern the level of work I see from them coming from kids I know coming out of pace and myself coming out of pace night and day I think that pace really prepares you guys to a different level of like competency when it comes to how to make a powerpoint how to respond to emails um just like the level of work you'll put into things and I credit that to definitely like the professors that like push you harder and you might be like, wow, this is like way too much work. Like this is so silly. But when, then when you're like presenting to your boss and you have like five extra slides and they're like, oh, what is this? What is this? And you're like, here's all the extra work I was able to provide for you. They're like, they, they see that drive and that um, energy. Thank you. Yeah. And congrats on your success. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions? We can also stay on a little bit if you're too scared to like ask questions during this. If you want to ask a question later, we can stay on for a little bit. Yeah, I just realized it was being recorded and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to sign off now. I have another meeting to go to. Uh, thank you, KP. I really appreciate it. You did a great job as I knew you would. Uh, by all means, everyone ask, uh, keep, uh, this is a chance to ask someone some really good questions. Don't miss this opportunity. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you very Bye. much. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Dr. C. Does anyone else? Okay. So I just, before we like close and everything, I wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to answer questions and give us advice and everything. Like congratulations on your career. You've obviously done great for yourself. Thank you guys so much. Yep, I wish all the best to you guys. Um, I think you guys have my contact information if you ever want to reach out or I'm on LinkedIn, that LinkedIn photo um, that needs to be updated horribly. But yeah, so feel free to add me. Um, happy to talk and chat about anything you guys might need help with. Thanks, Thanks so much. And of uh, course. let's look forward to uh, having dinner sometime. Yeah, you know, sure. yeah that'd be wonderful. No COVID is ever over. <laughs> I know, definitely. Yeah, we have to. Okay, okay. cool. I'll email you. All right. All right.
All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. I'll leave also. Take care.